So while waiting, uh, do you guys have a question or a clarification? So don't be shy to ask. Answer coming from Mr. Eda. How about the others? Do you guys have a question? Answer. None, sir. None, sir. All right. How many are we during the pipeline? Because uh, I think we were only 18. But right now we were, we're now around 20. Is there anyone you have noticed? How many are we on or during the part one? 23, sir. So there's three more. Mm -hmm. All right. So I don't know if they're still going to join us. Anyway, so uh, we're almost done. Actually, uh, I thought we can finish this one in just around you know 30 minutes or 35 minutes. I was wrong. Anyway, so uh, here's the solution for us to uh, have a stable uh, source. Okay, so instead of having a voltage source, we're going to use a current source. Okay, so just use this formula, and then you will get uh, the uh, source, or the, I mean the milliamps that it's supplying under the uh, R loop. So let's see in all these files that we can do this one. Oops, English cannot take. So one thing, okay, so one thing that you have to take note under a uh, voltage to current converter is you must use a specific amplifier. Okay, so let's discuss this one now. So in order to use current as an analog representation of a physical quantity, so we have to have some way of generating a precise amount of current. Okay, so there's a lot of options wherein they have their own specific solution and own purpose, but we have this certain amplifier wherein it's specifically made for a voltage to current converter, wherein it must have a precise amount of current within the uh, signal circuit. So why precise amount of current? Because the one that we're going to use now or the one that we're trying to output is the current source, okay? So we don't care what is the voltage source anymore, okay? What we care is the current source. As long as we have a consistent and precise amount of current, then we're good to go. So just look onto the uh, LT spice, the OP07, okay? So you will see here, it's a precision operational amplifier. So the same schematic, we have the real voltages here, the uh, inputs, the inverting, non-inverting. It's just that uh, uh, this one is programmed uh, for more precise uh, amount of current. All right? Okay, so let's now uh, try to recreate this one. So let's see if we can uh, get the same uh, result. So OPB. Uh, components and then op amps and then look for the OP07. So letter O. There you go. So it's OP07 or OP07. So just uh, get that one and then I'll create the real voltages first. So one here and then another one. 
So you can use this one, okay, or you can use this uh, uh, arrangement. But if you're going to use this one, positive going to negative, so you have to uh, indicate that it's negative. So you have to put negative something value. But if you're going to use this one, so uh, this one now is understood that uh, you're supplying negative to negative. Okay, so we'll just, just uh, use this one. So to uh, not include a negative sign anymore. Then of course, it must be grounded side by side and just connect this one on the real, uh, real voltages. And then we have here a feedback resistance or in uh, voltage uh, to current uh, conversion. This one now is R load. And then we have here the R1. R load. This is the R1, which is also grounded, of course. And then we have here the voltage input, which is also grounded. All right. So we're now done. So by the ball, this one is 250. Oops. And then we have here a voltage input. Uh, so instead of having a DC value, okay, so we'll use AC. So we'll design and then I'll use five volts and then 60 volts. So I'll just move this one right here. And again, this vo uh, real voltages are our uh, power supply wherein it can supply up to uh, positive and then up to uh, negative values. So we'll just put here 100 volts to avoid, to avoid complications. Okay. And then 100 volts. So as you can see, I didn't include a negative side anymore since uh, we have this kind of implement, uh, implementation or arrangement of uh, voltage source. And in here, so for now we'll start with one, one ohms, and then we'll see uh, if there is a difference, uh, no matter how high or what is the value of this uh, resistance. So take note, this is your R loop. And then this is just R1. All right. So let's now sign it this one, 15 milliseconds. So of course, initially we have here 5 to uh, 5 volts, pick to pick. 5 to negative 5. And how about our uh, output, current outputs? So once you see this one, just left click. So as you can see, we have here an inverted result okay, for your current. Oops. So uh, in here, we have a maximum of negative 20 milliamps. So take a look on the right side. This, in, uh, this one is for the uh, milliamps and this one is for the uh, voltages. Okay. And if you're confused, then you can just double click this one. So as you can see, we have a pick to pick negative 20 milliamps to positive 20 milliamps. So are we getting the same result? So yeah, as you can see, we have here a result of 20 milliamps. And then why negative? Because as you can see, the uh, polarity of your circuit now is something like this. So positive, going out here is still positive, but uh, once it passed through this I load, your uh, current here will become uh, negative due to the uh, polarity of your uh, I load. Okay, and then let's see if there are uh, changes, let's say, uh, we would uh, get a higher resistance, say 100, 100 ohms. So as you can see, no changes. Okay, we still have the same negative 20 to positive 20 milliamps. Right. How about if it's 500 ohms? So there's still no changes. Okay. So as you can see, 
values. So as you can see, it does not matter what is the resistance value of the R load, okay? As long as you have uh, enough supply on your uh, amplifier, then it, uh, it will give you the maximum uh, input okay, of your uh, voltage input or voltage source. So 5 volts, it can provide up to 20 milliamps. So any question or clarification so far regarding voltage to current converter? Right, so none. So in real life, maybe you're wondering uh, uh, where do we use this one? So in real life, okay, so we control uh, some devices uh, using current. So it actually I, either of those two, it could be a voltage or a current. So you can power up uh, any device. Uh, but in real life, okay, so maybe this is where you're going to connect uh, such uh, loads. Like for example, your television, okay? So as always, you will get 20 milliamps in here of current. Or electricity in uh, having this kind of circuit. All right. So that's it for the discussion. And then we have here your uh, laboratory number 11. Okay. So this one now is for the voltage to current converter with floating load. Okay. So this will be your uh, like uh, research work. Research assignment. Okay, so we have to search for the circuit, okay, or schematic of a voltage to current converter with floating load. So in a voltage follower, we have uh, the voltage divider, but in here we have uh, a floating load. So what is the schematic of the floating load? So we have uh, three questions in here. So for the first two, okay, 11A and then 11B. So the only difference is the in phase and then not in phase. Okay. So again, if it's in phase, uh, whatever is the input, it should uh, output the same waveform. So positive, positive also. But if it's not in phase, so it's the opposite. Okay. So it says here, design a voltage to current converter with floating load. Assuming that you have a 10 volts input voltage with a frequency of 60 hertz. So set the resistor value on the inverting input uh, of 50 ohms. Uh, 250 ohms, sorry. And then create a circuit wherein it will output the same phase of the original input voltage. So we use the proper amplifier on this. So we, you guys already know what I'm talking about on the proper amplifier. So do not just use, do not just. Do not just use the universal op amp, okay, or op amp or op amp. Too. So you have to use a specific uh, amplifier for the uh, voltage to current converter, which is the OP07. Okay, this one. Okay, and then so which is designed to work as a precision operational amplifiers, and then take a screenshot of your schematic and the graph of the VIN and the current of the load. So before, uh, you're only getting the screenshot of the uh, V in and V out, but in voltage to current converter, of course, you're going to get the uh, voltage input and then compare it with uh, current, okay, or current loop. Just like what we did in here. So you get the graph of the uh, R loop or the current on the this uh, resistance. Okay, so design uh, with in phase and then design with out of phase. Okay. So those are the uh, only difference. And then for the second to the last, we have here uh, a voltage to current converter with ground load. So if we have floating load, we also have ground load. So what is this ground load? So I would like you guys to search on the internet what is the schematic of the uh, this one voltage to current converter uh, with ground load? So basically the same. We have 10 volts input, 60 hertz frequency, and then uh, it's just that in here we have to set all of the values of the resistors to 250 ohms, except 
dr load which is equal to 100 so everything is 250 and then r load is equal to 100 ohms so again we use the proper amplifier on this which is designed to work as a precision of a traditional amplifier and then take a screenshot of the schematic and the graph of the in and current of the load okay so only one question for the uh, ground loop and once you're done with those three so quite similar with your uh, laboratory number 10 so from those three kits or problems that you have accomplished what are your thoughts about voltage to current converting what are the benefits of it in our circuit industry and then give a scenario right so that's it for laboratory number 11. Any clarification so far? So the one that we have in here is just a normal uh, voltage to current converter. Okay, it's just the default one. But we have another two types wherein it's uh, uh, really uh, usable or really the one that we are using in terms of uh, uh, in industry. So we have the floating load and then the ground load. Okay, so I would like you guys to search on those for the schematic of those, and then do it as your laboratory number 11. So any concerns so far regarding with your 10th laboratory and then 11th laboratory? And coming from Mr. Escobar, Mr. Adam, and Mr. Martinez. So maybe for now, I'm not the one who's assuming that you guys do not have a question. But in the future, that's the time that you're going to create new systematics. So maybe that's the time that you have a lot of questions. Okay. So good luck in finding those answers since maybe this is your first time in encountering this kind of problems. So again, uh, before it's super easy in meters, but in finals, it's uh, now really quite difficult. So you have to know the uh, concept of a certain uh, amplifier. Okay, so okay, that's it for the laboratory number 10 and then 11. So if you guys do not have a question anymore, then you guys may not go. So I will just upload this one on our uh, Facebook page. Okay, so thank you too and goodbye. Thank you for coming. Goodbye, thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye, bye-bye.